Hello again, and welcome to part two of my three-part series on how to build a particulate filter to put between your vacuum pump and your freeze dryer um, when you want to use your freeze dryer as a vacuum packer, okay? In part one, we discussed why you want to use a, a particulate filter, and I also discussed why it is that this canister type of a filtration system won't work okay it's uh, there's about four good reasons and I went over that so if you haven't watched part one you might want to do that because part one will explain what this is all about part two here all I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a parts list I'm going to give you a, a list of everything that you need to gather together and some of the prefab that you're going to need to do because there are some things that you're going to have to order uh, that might take a week or two to acquire so with that I'm Evan Rowell and this is Critical Thinking about filtration systems. To begin, this you're gonna to have to you're gonna to have to order this Roman carbide one and one sixteenth inch bit. And this is critical because you're gonna spend a lot of money on this, probably over a hundred, maybe $120. Uh, putting all this material together and if you don't put things together in such a way that they don't leak uh, you, you're just wasting your money because you have you have to build this in such a way that there is absolutely no leaks and two of the pieces that you're going to use is a three-quarter inch PVC pipe and this creates the hole that is necessary for this PVC pipe to fit in snugly this here is a one inch spade bit. This won't work because a one inch spade bit, if you'll notice, I, I drilled a hole here and the PVC pipe won't fit. But with this Roman carbide bit, and here's the uh, page, you can get this on Amazon. It's about 1350, I believe. This, uh, I drilled a hole in this scrap piece of, of uh, acrylic and it fits in there and it fits perfectly, okay? You're gonna need that. That kind of a fit is critical. Now, some people will drill a one inch hole trying to save that 1350 and then they'll sand it out or they'll file it out or something like that to make this piece of pipe fit in there. That's not a good idea. You're risking creating something here that's not gonna work because doing this by hand, trying to make this PVC pipe fit in the hole, what you'll inevitably do is you'll make it so that your hole is out of round. Uh, it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort Quite frankly, if I had to do it that way, I'd pay more than $13.50 to let somebody else do it because it's a long and arduous program or a process. So, go, so flip for this. Get this bit. Uh, this, this is really the only way to go because it builds, it'll cut a nice round hole and uh, that, that's going to be critical. Okay. The second thing you're going to need as far as drill bits go is you're going to need a half inch drill bit and you're going to need a one eighth inch drill bit. Okay, so make sure you acquire those two. Something else you're going to need now is a compass. You can get these at hardware stores, you can get them at craft stores and whatnot, but uh, in order to lay a few things out, you're going to need a compass. You're going to need two wrenches. I use uh, one crescent wrench and one channel lock. Um, two channel locks will work. As a matter of fact, that's probably best, but uh, two crescent wrenches will make it kind of difficult to do what we're going to have to do. Okay, I also have a straight edge here um, that's going to help me lay out uh, some of the prefab product or, or processes. I have a pair of pliers. Okay, you're going to need this pair of pliers. I bought some sandpaper. You're going to need some sandpaper. Here's a, a, an assortment pack. It has 180, 150, and 220 in it, uh, grits. And then possibly I'd hold off on buying this I hesitate because 800 grit sandpaper is going to be for polishing acrylic should you need to. You probably won't need this, but, um, you know, if you buy it and you don't need it, it's always something handy to have in your garage, okay? Now you're going to need some PVC cement. Now, I like to use the Christie's Red Hot Blue because it works very, very well cementing PVC to ABS. Now they have specialty uh, cements that are specially designed um, for gluing PVC to ABS, 
but uh, I find that this works very, very well. You're going to need some primer, and this is important. Now, I, I got a big one here because I already had it in my garage, but uh, you can buy these in a two-pack. And here's a, uh, a screenshot from Home Depot of the Christie's Red Hot Blue in a two-pack. Okay, so you're going to need that. All right, now, we're also going to need these. This is a two-part epoxy adhesive. And this is a two-part epoxy. You're going to need both of these, really, because when you mix these, it's more free-flowing. And you're going to discover that you're going to want a free-flowing. This one mixes a little bit thicker, but I really wouldn't trust anything else. Um, you can use the weld-on. You can use just about any two-part epoxy or liquid steel because um, the, this epoxy right here has a hard time sticking to acrylic and you're going to need this acrylic. Now if you look at your freeze dryer you're going to notice that um, the door on your freeze dryer is made of three quarter inch acrylic and it's really you, you really need that um, to for number one it's, it's stiff enough that it's not going to warp under the high pressures of um, a vacuum and number two, it's going to have the smooth surfaces necessary to press down against your O-rings that, that you're going to use. So here's a screenshot. You're going to need this. This is three-quarter inch uh, acrylic. It costs about 35 uh, maybe $36. Um, and you're going to have to order that. It only comes, the smallest that you can buy three-quarter inch in is, um, is a 12 by 12 sheet. And at 12 by 12 sheet, you're going to be able to get five of the discs that you're going to need. All right, what we have here is your fitting. I get this from Harvest Right, and this is going to okay. And if you look at this, here's um, here's the phone number and the part number and everything. You call Harvest Right, you tell them what you need, and you give them the numbers that you see on the screen right here. Now these are ten bucks a piece. Okay, you're going to need two of them, and they're going to charge you ten dollars shipping and handling. Plus, while you're talking to them, you're going to need this. This is the vacuum hose that connects your vacuum pump to your freeze dryer. And I know you already have one, but you need two of them because you're going to put your, the filter that we're putting together in between your freeze dryer and your vacuum pump. So you're going to need another one of those hoses. And they're $16. So there's 46 bucks right there. Okay, that's halfway to 100 And all you bought is these two fittings and that hose. And um, then with the $35 for this acrylic, um, you're starting to get up there and you're understanding why. I told you this is going to be over $100, maybe $120 project. All right, you're going to need O-rings. Now, these are very specific O-rings. This O-ring, if you'll notice, will fit exactly inside of this 4-inch ABS sleeve. Um, the inside diameter of the O-ring is four inches. The outside is four and a half inches. So it's a pretty heavy-duty O-ring. And here is where you get those. You, you can order those on, on Amazon. And so here's a screenshot of that. These come in a package of five. I, can't rec I don't recall what the cost was. I think it was a nine or ten dollars or something. Okay. You're going to need, and I'll explain why later, but this is an old... Um, the cover to an old CD case that, that I no longer use. And the reason that I use this is because the plastic thickness of this thing is just perfect for what, uh, what you're going to need. And I'll show you um, what that's all about later. You're going to need two of these. These are three-quarter inch slip joint to put on the end of your um, three-quarter inch PVC. And it converts it and adapts it to a three-quarter inch uh, male pipe thread. You're going to need two of those. You're going to need two sleeves, for the, again, for the three-quarter inch pipe. And the reason that you're going to need those is you're going to have to cut maybe a quarter inch off of both ends and discard the middle so that you have this. And what this is going to do is this is, go, is a ring that will slip over that, and you're going to need that, and I'll show you why that in a minute. But you're going to need three of these, okay? So, um, with that, now, 
This, of course, is what the acrylic looks like. It's three-quarter inch. This is a piece that you're going to have to fabricate, and I'll show you exactly how you're going to do that a little bit later. Now, you're going to need three of these. Now, these are four-inch. They call them hubs, but you, for, for this, we'll just call them sleeves. These are ABS, four-inch ABS sleeves. They cost about uh, 4 to $5 each. You're going to need three of them. You can see one, two, and three. And then you're going to need this. Here's a screenshot. This is called a Tommy cap. And the reason that you're going to need the Tommy cap is, is you're going to end up cutting the top of this off and you're going to need this bottom half because it slips on the inside of this uh, four inch ABS pipe. Now you may be wondering why it is that I'm using white instead of black. There's absolutely no difference, okay? At least no difference as far as this project goes. I just happen to have some of this. So I use so I'm using it in white. Plus, it's gonna help you, uh, it's gonna help me demonstrate how this all goes together. So don't worry about the fact that this is white. Uh, you want to get about a, maybe a foot, a two-foot section. I think Home Depot and any hardware store will sell these, so you don't have to buy a 10-foot piece of this stuff because that's $20. But um, they will sell, I do believe, unless your uh, hardware store will allow you to cut up you know, exact lengths and stuff like that, which would be a good idea if you don't have a 12-inch chop saw or a 12-inch miter saw or radial arm saw at home to cut these up. Because making sure that you have flat square edges or faces here is very important. As a matter of fact, it becomes critical in this project in certain areas. So anyhow, here is a screenshot of this Tommy cap, um, exactly what it is that you're going to want to look for and acquire. Uh, now you're also going to need an end cap, a four inch end cap here, which is this piece on the very top. Okay. And, um, there's a couple of things you're going to have to do to this, okay? Now, with that, um, that that's pretty much all. I can't think of anything else that I might be forgetting. Oh, you might want, you're going to want a drill. And uh, I don't... I don't use the drill, but not everybody has the machinery here that I have in my garage. Um, when it comes to the acrylic, um, this three-quarter inch thick acrylic is difficult to work with if you're using nothing but hand tools. And so if you can find somebody with the equipment that I have, it's, it's just general wood shop equipment, but I use a drill press, I use a bandsaw, and I use a 12-inch disc sander. Uh, it makes working with this uh, three-quarter inch acrylic just so much easier. But you can use, like I say, you can use um, drills. But it's difficult. I'm not going to stand here or sit here and try to tell you exactly how to do this. But when you're drilling with the hand drill, you have to almost always have somebody else help you to hold the project steady and on a surface that's not going to slip and so on and so forth. I'm just going to leave that up to you on how to accomplish that. But I do use a drill press and that makes things a whole lot easier. Okay, so there you have all the different parts that you're going to need. And I have here a cutout of exactly how this is going to work. So as you can see, this is the filtration material. It's just very lightly um, placed uh, toilet tissue. It will um, stop particulate from getting through. But here's what we have right here. Now you're going to notice in here, oh, this is one of the pieces of acrylic that you're going to need. I cut this out. And what this is, this acrylic, when you cut these out, is going to be exactly as round as the uh, outside diameter of the three-quarter inch pipe, the uh, uh, ABS pipe that you're going to use. And the reason that you want that is because this needs to be able to fit inside of here so that it, so that it moves in easily, but it also doesn't make it past that little half-inch stop that's in there, okay? Inside of each one of these sleeves is going to be a little ring. I don't need, I'll, uh, I'll show you a screenshot of it right here. But that little tiny ring there has got to be able to stop 
um, this material, or more specifically, it's going to have to be able to stop this piece that you're going to fabricate from fabricate from fitting through there. Okay. Now, what this is is this is simply something to prevent your filtration material from coming up against this three-quarter inch PVC that's going to be drawing the air in. You don't want that being sucked into there and getting sucked into your vacuum. So I use uh, this and you can see how this will fit in there. Okay and then your filtration material when it comes in is going to go up against that and it's going to prevent your filtration for material. If this wasn't there See, this is this can be kind of hard to get out of here, but uh, if this wasn't there, your filtration material could go up against that pipe and get sucked into your vacuum, and it would prevent the filtration system from working very well. So let's uh, let's get started with the prefab. Now, once you've got all of this material together, including this panel of acrylic, then you're going to want to do some prefab. You're going to want to to do a little bit. Now, I'm using foam board here because during the development phase while I was uh, experimenting with a lot of different uh, ways to do this I used up my whole sheet now you can as you can see here you can actually get five of these discs out of here but I've used up all five of them so when I when you look at this this is foam board you don't need foam board you need the three-quarter inch piece of acrylic. I'm just using foam board here as an example. Also, these discs right here, I've made out of particle board. This is what you're going to want to end up with, but this is going to have to be the three-quarter inch acrylic, okay? I'm using particle board simply for demonstration purposes. Well, quite frankly, because I don't want to spend another $35 on a piece of acrylic um, when, I can, when I can use this as an example. And then I'll, uh, I'll not use that piece of acrylic again. So for me, it would have been a waste of money. But anyhow, when you get the acrylic, you're going to want to lay out, take a piece of your pipe, you're going to want to lay it on there, and you're going to want to draw a circle around there because you want these discs to be the same size as this four inch pipe in the outside diameter. Okay, Okay. so the first prefab that you're going to have to do, or in other words, the work that you're going to have to do before you come and put the thing together in part three, is you're going to want to acquire your uh, three quarter inch acrylic and you're going to want to lay it out and drill the holes in it before you cut out the discs. Now the one that we're going to go through first is how to lay out this center one. Okay, and uh, again, I'll emphasize this. Make sure that when you draw the circles, I, I haven't drawn the circle around this one yet, but when you draw this center circle, you want to lay it out exactly as I'm going to show you here right now, and you're going to want to drill your holes before you cut anything else out. And also, the same thing is going to hold true for this one here, because these are only the only two that you're going to have to drill holes in before um, you move on to part three. This one you're going to have to drill a total of uh, 17 holes and this one you're going to get one hole right smack in the middle. All right, right now I'm going to show you through imagery because you can't really see these lines um, on, on the video. So I'm going to show you through imagery how to lay out this hole pattern. Okay, So here in this picture you're going to see the circle that you're going to draw and it's going to be a four inch circle the outside diameter of your four inch pipe so this circle should actually be a four and one half inches in diameter okay now the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your compass and you're going to set your compass to um, two and a half inches and then you're going to place the compass pin on the edge of the circle anywhere you want and draw an arc such as the one that you see here then, without changing the compass, uh, re leave the compass exactly as you originally set it. Um, you want to place the pin of the compass where you see the red X here, and you're going to want to draw another arc. And after you draw that arc, we're going to call that one the second uh, arc number two. Then you're going to want to draw arc number three by placing the pin of the compass where you see the red X here. And you're going to want to draw a third arc. Okay. 
Now that's going to give you the layout for your first line. What you want to do is you want to draw a straight line as shown through the arc intersects. Okay, now if you'll do that, what you'll have done is you will have um, cut your circle, your original circle, directly in half. But now we need to find the exact center point. So what you do is you take your compass, still unchanged, and you place your pin where the red X is, where the red X is here, and draw yet a fourth arc. Now that fourth arc is going to intersect with the first one that you drew, and you're going to draw a straight line through the arc intersect, intersects as shown here. Okay, now that, what that's going to do is that's going to show you exactly where the center of your disc is, and it's also um, going to divide your disc into four equal portions. Okay, now here is where you will change the compass. You'll change it to one and three quarters inches, and then you place the compass pin on the red X and draw another arc, such as the one that you see here. Okay, now what that's going to do is that's going to set your points for your straight lines dividing the disc into eight equal sections. You can see here in this picture, you start where the first arrow is and you go through the center of the disc or where the, the two straight lines come together. And then you turn right around and you do it again at the other point of that arc where it intersects the circle and through the middle of the circle. And this is what you will have when you're all done. Your circle will now have been divided into eight absolutely uh, perfect um, sections or pie sections, if you will. Now, then you're going to want to take your one and one sixteenth inch drill bit and you're going to want to drill eight holes using those straight line intersects like you see here as the center point of, uh, of your drill bit. You go out and either with your drill press or with your hand drill or however you want to do it, just make sure you back it up with a piece of wood so you don't drill into your floor or the concrete or whatever else you're going to use. And you drill those eight holes. Okay. Now after you've drilled those eight holes, you can see here, you set your compass again now to two inches. And you place the pin on the red X, which is the center of the circle, and you draw a two inch circle right in the middle. And then, as you can see here, you're going to want to drill um, nine half inch holes in your acrylic at the eight outer points and the one center point. And this is what it'll look like when you're done. Okay, now remember, don't remove the paper from this while this is going on. Now, as after this is done, you cut along the dotted lines between the outer holes and then you carefully, you sand down to the line using um, the sleeve, the black ABS sleeve as a guide. The goal is to be able to get this disc to fit inside the black ABS sleeve without going past um, that center point or that stop in the center of the sleeve. When you're done, you should have something that looks like this, okay? And this is, uh, this is what I had right here. Now, this is a little bit of a different layout, but that's okay. Uh, the layout that you have here is, is better and it's easier to do. But as you'll see, the goal then, when you're sanding down these edges, is to have them so that they'll fit inside of there, but it doesn't go past that stop in the middle, okay? So you're going to have to get that prefabbed before you're completely done, or before you're ready to come back and do part three. Now, here's something important. You're going to have to cut this off. This is your Tommy cap. And how, um, how I'm going to cut that off is I'm going to use the longest piece of PVS pipe. I'm not using this in the project, this is an extra piece, but I'm going to set this in there and I'm going to push it down not too far because this tapers, as you can see, when you first put it in there, it's really easy, it's really loose and that's too loose. You got to push it down until it just starts to get hard and you leave it there. Now, you need to cut this off and you use this um, 
pipe here as a guide so that you can cut this off straight and I'll show you why a little bit later why you want to be able to uh, cut that off and utilize this bottom portion right here but I'm going to go out and I'm going to do it with my 12 inch miter saw it'll make it fairly easy the secret to doing that is to make sure you go slow because wood gives a little bit you can you that saw blade can grab uh, that wood um, a lot easier without any ill effects plastics not quite so giving if you push that blade down into this plastic too fast and it grabs that plastic it'll it'll shatter it it'll throw it all over the place it's a very dangerous situation so you want to be very careful when you're when you're cutting this um, probably the best way if you don't have the machine or the experience is just to use a handsaw. Try not to use a hacksaw. That hacksaw blade is so narrow that it wants to do this routine. Okay, so um, give me a second here. I'm going to go out and I'm going to cut this off and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and I've, I've cut that Tommy cap off, but before I go any further, I need to back up a little bit and talk about this three quarter inch acrylic again. Um, I showed you how to lay out and drill and, and cut out this centerpiece. But as part as your prefab, you're going to have to also cut out this one where you have the, the hole directly in the middle. Lay out your lines so that you can find the hole. Then you drill the hole and you cut it out so that you have a circle. Now I've used, in place of the acrylic, I've used MDF pli or, uh, particle board simply because I didn't want to waste that much acrylic. But anyhow, this is what it'll look like only it will be um, it'll be acrylic instead of this wood here so don't get the idea that I'm, I'm using wood because I'm not I'm just using it for demonstration purposes you're also going to have to cut out one of these discs right here it's the same size as both of the others okay they will both they will all fit inside nice and snugly very tightly inside this ABS sleeve the only thing is on this one on this one this is the one that's going to go inside um, your end cap now I'll, I'll discuss this later um, but there's a reason that I put a bevel on this edge and here's a picture of it okay uh, this bevel right here is so that this um, acrylic doesn't sit down and run into there's this this little lip inside of here okay it, and you could remove the lip and avoid doing the bevel but it's just a lot easier doing the bevel and it doesn't make any difference to the quality of the sturdiness of it I I leave that in there and also inside these caps there's going to be injection points they're going to be little nipples that sit up inside of this one there's four and in some manufacturers you're going to find one in the middle and you're going to want to get rid of those and how you do that is you take this pair of pliers and you can reach in there and grab that little nip and twist it and it will come off okay and you do that to all four of them and what that'll do is that will allow this disc to sit down firmly against this plastic without there be, or this uh, cap without there being gap under there and even though that you are going to glue this in uh, it's better if it's sitting down against that cap okay so you're going to need to have this piece done you're going to have to have this piece done with the bevel on it and you're going to have to have this piece done with that one and one sixteenth inch hole in the middle so that your ABS or your uh, PVC pipe will go through the middle of it and another thing this doesn't have to be exactly in the middle okay uh, it's it's not that critical you can see I've done it here I've, I've got it really in the middle but if this was off to one side or another by a you know some minuscule amount don't sweat that it's not important okay um, this is not a, a, a you know a rocket lab that you were working in here and you can be off a little bit with this off center as a matter of fact I think this one I think it is yeah you can see that is off center just just a hair as I turn it around but that's okay all right now back to the Tommy cap to be honest with you I was really uncomfortable using that short piece of pipe 
um, to cut that tongue cap, okay? So I had another piece, and this is um, just another piece that I had out in the garage. I've, I've got four or five or six of these. And I put the tongue cap in there, and I was able, being very careful, I was able to cut that tongue cap top right off, okay? And what, what that left me with was this here. And this is the one that's important. This is the one that you'll use. I don't know if you can see it. I'll, I'll uh, do a picture. I'll take a picture of it and show it to you. But um, you can see here this little lip or this, this insert is going to provide the space between this outer sleeve and the inside of this pipe. It's going to provide a channel for your, um, oh, there's a piece already in there. Okay, it's going to provide a channel for your O-ring. And for this project, we're going to use two O-rings. And I'll show you why when I'm, I'm manufacturing it in, in part three. But you can see that fits right down in there. Okay, and then the second one will sit right on top of that. And then this is your, your end cap, your door. This needs to be free floating. And I've discussed that when I talked about that canister type. And it will fit right down inside of there. And you can see through these pictures how that's going to sit on top of there. And then when this thing starts to draw a vacuum, it's going to draw this free floating uh, acrylic down against those O-rings. And uh, it'll give you a vacuum proof seal. Anyhow, you'll see all that come together um, during the manufacturing process in part three. So anyhow, I have this now. And when this is glued in, as you'll see in part three, when this is glued in, this is the face that we cut off. It'll go down because it's going to be important for the... Um, this is going to be a little bit difficult. I might have to put this in from the other side and push it all the way through. Yeah, there we go. This is going to stick out like that, and this is going to be the channel that that O-ring sits in. You can see it right there. You want this insert here to come above this first O-ring by just a hair, and that's where this comes in. This uh, CD case that I've cut out provides just the thickness to where I can... Put that, that'll go down to the table, but it'll hold that um, O-ring up off enough. Yeah, here we go, we're just gonna have to push it down in this way. But if I push it down, making sure that will spin, and then push this down when I glue that together, that now has been set the perfect distance for this to sit around and it'll come above this o-ring just a hair you don't want it too much because you got another o-ring that's going to go on top of this and that is the one that has to be able to compress with the free floating end cap but anyhow so that's part of your preparation then is to take this piece of plastic this cd case cover and you're going to want to use what this Tommy cap insert, the one that you've cut off. You're going to want to put it on there. You're going to want to draw a line around the outside edge. Or you can use this, put it on there, and draw your line using the inside diameter of this because it's going to be the same. Okay, but once you've drawn your line, then you're going to want to cut it out. And, and ideally, the Tommy cap is going to slide in and out of that line without too much play. Okay. That's how big you're going to want that hole. So that's part of your prefab, is to go ahead and put that together. Now, uh, what else? Now, this is one that I've already completed. This one um, already has the acrylic down in there. Uh, the reason that this is completed is I had to do it as part of my research. Um, there's, uh, there's, not, there's not much more. But part of the prefab now also is these pieces right here. 
okay, you're going to have to cut these inserts or these pipes to a pretty exact size. And I'll give you the sizes right now, depending upon, I, I, I think they're internationally standard. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, the distance between this center ring and this outer edge are, are, are going to be pretty close. And besides, you're going to want to dry fit all this together to make sure that, that you've got these things cut correctly. This one is three and three quarter inches lengthwise this way. And you'll notice I put a pretty heavy bevel around the edge of this one also. And you can see why right here. You're going to want this piece right here to actually go past that center ring. And it does. When this goes in, it goes past that center ring. Okay, and it's going to sit against this thing. Because you don't want this thing flopping around inside of there. And during the manufacturing portion of this thing, I'll show you how to prevent, you know, this thing from flopping around by uh, gluing it up in a certain way that your sleeves are going to fit exactly as they should. Okay, all that will happen in part three. So that has a bevel. Um, the other one, you're going to want another one that's three and three quarter inches. That'll be this one here. Okay. And then you're going to want this one here. Um, where is it? What do I do with it? Oh, it's right here. This one here. This is two and a quarter inches. Okay. So you need two three and three quarter inches and you're going to need one two and a quarter inches and the reason that this is only two and a quarter inches is this is going to sit against that stop that middle stop ring inside of here but it's also going to sit against this um, acrylic that this acrylic disc that you put inside of here okay now the reason that we're going through all of this is A quarter inch thickness of this sleeve or of this pipe right here, I didn't trust it to be able to handle the extreme pressures that are going to be present on the outside of this unit when there's a vacuum on the inside. It would be prone to cracking. It would be prone to failure, and I don't want this to fail. So, but if you'll notice, when you've got this sleeve or this pipe inside the sleeve, it increases the wall thickness here to half an inch. And that's what you want. With the acrylic embedded in the end cap and 100% uh, overlap of your pipe and your sleeves, and then with the three quarter inch thick acrylic, th and incidentally, this is the only one that really needs to be three quarters of an inch. The reason that I use three quarters of an inch here and um, in, the, in the end cap is because I had it. I already had that big sheet. I couldn't buy anything less. So I, I already had it. But this one really needs to be three quarters of an inch. Okay, because if it's too thin, it could concave, it could fail on you. And this is the one that will sit into here and press against these o-rings and there'll be two of them in there and that's what will give you your seal and not only that but having these sleeves com or these pipes completely inside the sleeve it ensures a leak proof seal okay now in part three we're going to put all this together and I'll show you exactly how that's to be done all right so with that I think that's I think that's everything with that, gather together all these parts as I have shown you. Three quarter inch, three quarter, or three and three quarter, three and three quarter, uh, two and one quarter, three sleeves, one end cap, and uh, then you're going to get the, these pieces here. Oh, one more thing. There's something I haven't shown you. Uh, this is kind of um, not, I mean, this is important, but... Uh, you see these little pieces? These are the pieces that are going to go through the acrylic and are going to have this sleeve mounted on it. You're going to have one that is um, two and a quarter inches long 
and you're going to have one that is two and three quarters or uh, two and three quarters or three inches long. Let's say three inches because you've got room to play. Now look at this picture. You see that I have put a bevel around the top edge of this uh, little piece of three quarter inch PVC. And the reason that I've done that is when you go to push uh, to glue this into this hole, that edge is going to encourage the epoxy that you're going to have in here to squeeze down between the plastic and or this uh, PVC and this acrylic. Okay, without that edge, if I was to try to push it in with this side, you got a square edge here, and that would tend to push the epoxy in front of it. But with that little bit of a bevel, it, it won't push the epoxy. The epoxy will kind of force itself in between here and you'll get a better seal. So that's important. So when you, uh, when you make these two, make sure that you put a bevel around both of them. Okay, there's one thing that I forgot to mention in the prefab of this entire project. And that is you're going to have to take one of these sleeves and you... I've talked a lot about that ridge in there and how important it is. However, on this last piece here, it's important that this ridge is gone. So you're going to have to take some sandpaper, the um, 80 grit sandpaper, and put it, you know, with your fingers or you can wrap it around uh, um, a round piece of wood or something. But you're going to have to sand that ridge off. Now that ridge isn't very big, okay? It's not very tall at all. It's, it won't take you a long time, maybe 15 minutes with a piece of sandpaper just rubbing it back and forth. But it's important that that ridge allow this insert, as you can see here, it stops. You got to get rid of that insert so this piece of, of um, four inch pipe will go past that insert. And the reason being for that is that, as you can see here, where this O-ring sits, you can't have that ridge um, in this channel where the O-ring is going to sit. Uh, it has to be gone. The edge has to be smooth. Not only does the edge have to be smooth, but um, it's going to have to be sanded down a little bit better than just the uh, the 180 or the 80 grit. You're going to have to sand it down with the 220 and possibly with that 800 grit. But you want to get it as smooth as possible. And boy, I'll tell you, when these things get stuck in there, they get stuck in there tight. So anyhow, that's why I bought this three pack from 80 grit. You use the 80 to take it down initially then you'll pass over it with the 150, the 220, and then maybe uh, get it wet. This is wet dry here, 800 grit, sand over it. But you want things in there to be as smooth as you can get them, and that ridge has to be gone, okay? So with that, um, I do believe that's the end of everything um, as far as the prefab goes. I talked about these being uh, two and a quarter and three inches long about the bevel on the edge and um, I think that's about it. Get all your stuff together because when I in part three when I start putting this together and I start gluing it together you're gonna have to follow along and everything is gonna have to be done up to this point. This is gonna have to be cut your three discs are gonna have to be made and sanded down and they're gonna have to fit right and uh, this one here is gonna have to be completely com done with all the holes, it's going to have to fit down inside of a sleeve. And uh, let's see, what else? Oh, and incidentally, as you're dry fabbing these things, these things are hard to pull apart. And I have found, and it's, it's perfectly okay to do this, if you'll just grab it with that pair of channel locks. And even then, it's not real easy. But if you grab it with that pair of channel locks and rock it back and forth, 
I found that's the easiest way to get it out. So again, make sure you have a good pair of channel locks. And it, and it doesn't damage this end or this side piece here to the, any point where you need to be concerned about it. So with that, um, I'm going to end here. And I hope that you'll like and subscribe to my channel and uh, hit the notification bell because you're going to want to know when part three comes out when I actually put all this together, which is going to be real soon. So I'll end here. I'm Evan Rowell, and this is Critical Thinking about filtration.